Internationally recognised lithium expert Joe Laurie is known as Mr Lithium. He's the host of the Global Lithium podcast and provides advisory services for his global lithium business. Lithium prices have soared due to surging electric vehicle demand, but have come off last year on the back of concerns about the slowing growth of electric vehicle sales in China. Joining me for his take on Outlook demand and the big guys like Tesla, also Aussie stocks to watch, is Joe Laurie. Joe, welcome. Thanks for having me. Now, Joe, Goldman Sachs just came out saying the lithium price outlook appears bearish and falls are far from over. What's your short to long outlook on the lithium price and demand? I'm really on the other side of the Goldman Sachs equation. Uh, I think for lithium chemicals, we're either at the bottom or very close and you'll start to see a rise in pricing by the end of the second quarter for lithium chemicals. Spodumene may lag a bit just based on the way contracts are done, but I, the lithium story is intact. Goldman Sachs's review of the market is generally based on an excess of supply from lipidolite. And at the prices they're predicting, most of that lipidolite is not economic. So they haven't reconciled that yet. I also noticed it, it. it's not the first time that you've said that Goldman Sachs has been wrong. Well, it's I, I view Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley as stopped clocks. <laughs> Even a stop clock's right twice a day. They're right yeah. every once in a while. Absolutely. Now, uh, moving on to the world's best known electric vehicle maker, Tesla, it's seen its so stocks suffer this year, but of course is one of the the best known ones. What do you like and dislike about the company? Well, I actually was the original supplier of lithium to their supply chain. So I go back a long way uh, with that group. Uh, I think Elon Musk has done more for the electric vehicle market than any single human has. I think he's done more damage to lithium supply over the years by some of his comments than any other person has. But I'm, I'm a Tesla bull. I my first acquisition of Tesla was at the split adjusted equivalent of 12 bucks. And uh, I bought in the last cycle at, at 109, I think it was. So where I, I Elon's going to say things that are going to frustrate a lot of the investors, especially from the left-hand side of the political spectrum, given Elon's kind of taken a right, right wing approach recently. But those people that really look at it carefully can see he's really the only U.S. car maker that is making uh, inroads where the other dominance is, of course, by BYD and the other Chinese. Absolutely. Now, in Australia, we've gotten uh, the benefits of this uh, hype and also excitement about electric vehicles, they, that sales are surging here. And we've, of course, had a boom in lithium explorers, developers, producers. Which lithium stocks stand out to you as having compelling operations and management? Well, I like Pilbara. Uh, that's my largest uh, ASX holding. Uh, I like the team. I met Neil Biddle in 2015. I've had Ken and Dale on my podcast. So I'm big fans of Pilbara. I also like the guys at Liontown. I, I've been up to that project and you know, I, I know there's a lot of controversy around some of the things that have happened in the last year with Liontown. But and you, you can't talk about lithium in WA without mentioning Minres and Chris Ellison he is, you know, kind of the larger than life character. But if you look at the record hard, he's not a very good lithium operator. He may be a really good lithium deal maker, but Mount Mary and Wojina have not covered themselves in glory from an operational perspective. So I do hold Minres as well, but I'm much more bullish on somebody like a Pilbara than I am on uh, Minres. Well, it's great to hear your views because I know you travel here and actually meet those guys face to face. Um, more broadly, when it comes to lithium uh, surprises, perhaps, what do you think um, may, may shock, surprise, be a contrarian view for um, the lithium stocks or prices in the coming 12 months? I think there's a level of uncertainty right now that that we haven't had uh, in, a, in a while. Uh, the whole question around EVs tends to be 
a Western press narrative. If you look at the data, EV sales were up 31% last year. Yet, if you read Reuters or Bloomberg or some of the others, I'll talk about, oh, the slowing growth. Well, when you have a high growth rate like EVs have had, you're going to have a slowing growth rate. But the, the volumes are still higher year over year over year. It's still a compelling story. I, I also think that uh, because the Western, the old legacy OEMs have up till now pretty much failed in their EV offerings, that the Western press talks mo most about that, whereas they should be watching BYD and Tesla because they've gone from strength to strength. Absolutely. That's some very interesting insights there, Joe, and really appreciate your time um, and really very unique and experienced perspective today. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot.